I remember vividly waking up that morning and hearing the sound of a plane. It was really loud. And then I heard an explosion, but I thought, gosh, there's so many times in New York City that I wake up and hear a loud noise, a loud bang or a car wreck or something like that. And I thought I would look out the window and see nothing, just like always had been. That wasn't the case, and as I looked out my window, I saw the leftovers of a giant ball of fire and just this and massive hole in the side the of the impenetrable, and movable building, it seemed. It's slowly going down the building. That building looks like it took a major hit. It did! It's a plane! I remember Al Roker was still doing the weather. <laughs> and there was nothing on the news and I called home to let my parents know that something had just happened and they didn't realize the magnitude of what was going on before my eyes and so that was difficult for me they just kind of said they would get up later they were in California and um, we would talk about it later I remember seeing what appeared to be like people or chairs or something like that falling, but I was so frantic I didn't really take it all in at once. Then the second plane hit. The plane hit. The second plane hit as I was maneuvering my clothes around to get ready for work. just this enormous explosion. And at that moment, I knew something was really bad. Something was really wrong. And I thought for sure there were other targets. It was very frightening. Um, it was very scary. So that was the moment at which it turned from sadness that other people had lost their lives to extreme fear uh, for my own life, and the future of Manhattan. Um, so that was the shift, and that was scary.
Attack on America, a special edition of NBC Nightly News. Terrorists declare war on the United States, hijacking jetliners, crashing them into New York's World Trade Towers. Another airliner into the Pentagon, threatening the seat of national power. Thousands likely dead. Downtown New York in chaos. America wondering, what next? On Midtown Manhattan, and tonight America is at war with terrorists after a stunning series of attacks. And so that night, the night of 9 11, I spent it with friends on 14th Street so that I didn't have to go home to be so close to where the tragedy had occurred. And I remember we went to a candlelight vigil at Union Square on 14th Street and a friend of mine had finally made his way up to that part of Manhattan walking, um, perhaps stopping at various spots to meet friends along the way, but he had he was on Wall Street at the time, he worked on Wall Street, and he had just dust and debris all over his jacket and clothes and face, and I remember seeing him, and I just started to cry. That day was just too much. It was too much. Seeing people fall. the sounds of the explosions, the fire, the manic behavior of all of the people at NBC trying to count planes to figure out how many were still left in the sky, the mayhem and the trying to get from point A to point B to point C without any real predictable transportation. It was all so exhausting. And so ever since then, my life has been about trying to... trying to keep myself from falling into the hole, the chasms that are depression and anxiety. Anxiety from that event being the beginning of any form of anxiety disorder or, de or major depressive syndrome um, that I had experienced. I'd never had it before. Just the beginning of the day, like I'm right before my computer was turned on. You knew that something's going on because every other floor underneath you is trying to get on the stairwell at the same time. That's only just caught me the debris and it just like threw me on all fours, like buried me. You cannot hear the chaos, but it is there, as is the panic. All of it wrapped in a nearly golden glow, covered in smoke and soot. The photograph taken, Marcy Borders, 9-11, frozen in time. On 9-11, I can't get it out of my head, and I wish... <laughs> oh, Lord, I just wish that I could just have a peace of mind, like, you know, like, uh, 
my brain is so packed, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, and I tell people, they're like, what's wrong? I'm like, I just got so much on my brain. Like, you know, they don't understand that it's not them or, and I know everybody has life situations. There's some people who wake up with no cure to their disease, but at the same time, I just have a lot on my brain and uh, I've never had so much on my brain. And so that was the catalyst that started it. And from that day forward, I've been fighting a battle with depression and anxiety ever since.